Well, what are we up to today? Well, we've got an SSD kicking around and we've got a laptop. And this is a Dell Latitude Rugged 14. I think it's the model 5404. It's a little bit wonky on the desk, probably because I've got something under it. But that's all right. This is a second-hand purchase, I think, from Reboot IT. Um, now, this should be a fairly easy job to replace. I'm charging the battery. This has only just arrived, so we're going to give this a good clean-up afterwards. They've preloaded Windows 10 onto the drive, but it's a mechanical drive, and I want a solid state. Now, they've got little doors that cover all the ports and all the knickknacks in here. Um, now, what took me a little while to figure out here is this little blue tab. You push this blue tab aside, and then you can pull the battery out. Apparently, you can hop swap, hot swap the batteries with these things. So, that would be nice to be able to do that. Um, now, this should be a hard drive. And there's the same little blue tab off in this corner here. Where's my viewfinder? You can see that. I'm going to push it in with my finger as I'm pulling this other little blue tab. Or blue tag, I don't know what you want to call it. And that drive caddy should just slide out. With a bit of snagging on something. That blue tab is pushing it over. There we go. Had to just pull that corner out a little bit. So that's our drive caddy. So we're going to swap these drives over, and we're going to stick Windows 10 on here. I'm pretty sure the way Windows 10 licensing works, we can just whack Windows 10 on here and it'll figure out that this thing's licensed anyway. So, uh, let's clear the bench. Now, for those of you questioning why I'm dealing with such an old laptop, well, for one, it's rugged and I like rugged stuff. And two, I want to do a little bit of 4K video editing in the field. And my previous field laptop is this little Asus 1015H. Um, it even has a hard time even just playing 4K video. Um, and it has had numerous upgrades. And this is what I call my apocalypse kit. There's a bit of everything in here to deal with the digital apocalypse. Um, and this kit has traveled the world. Um, it's done a couple of laps of the globe. Most like, uh, most primarily to the USA and back. So, um, this laptop was going quite cheap, and uh, I'd budgeted for a few things that um, ended up being a lot cheaper. So the difference in that budget was enough to pay for this laptop. And uh, being a rugged one, it's probably going to bounce around in the back of an Argo or my military vehicles, or maybe even an armoured vehicle. I figure a solid state drive is probably a sensible um, decision in this. Now, I'm not sure how to get this apart, but it looks like... Spudger might do it. Let's have a look here. I'm really hoping it's a SATA drive in here and not a mini IDE. Though given that the machine has USB 3 on it, I think it's probably in SATA era. I would be highly shocked if it did not. Okay, there we go. So, yep. Ah. So, yep, we do need to remove those two screws before we bend anything further. I hope I'm actually removing that screw. These are screws that have got such a fine thread, you can't quite tell if you're stripping the screw or if you're removing it. It's a pretty disconcerting feeling when you're dealing with an item you only have one of. And especially with these things, it's threaded sheet aluminium. Uh, oh no, it looks like they put some little nut certs in there. Right, I'm guessing, now that that's off, these two sections should separate. They should lift and separate, because Victor says so. Or at least that's the Futurama reference that comes to mind. Okay, that is separating nicely. I guess I probably didn't need to remove those. Oh, yes I did, in fact. Okay, there goes the top. There goes the bottom. There's our top and bottom. And there's our drive, with a SATA connector on it. I can probably remove quite gently. Okay. So, geez, this is a lot lighter. I've, when I did this with my Asus PC, it was actually using the weight of the drive to actually uh, balance the laptop, and it wouldn't balance properly anymore. So I think it's got to go this way up. Yep. And that's why it was hard to remove this little rubber mounting 
like shock mounts in here. So we'll try and position this in here as best we can. And that obviously looks like it's meant to sit offset slightly. Or maybe that's just me being an idiot. Um, or having the drive placed into the cradle wrong. This would make a lot more sense because everything fits squarely in there. Okay. Keeping in mind this is the first time I've ever seen one of these guys. So, Yeah, they did. They put little nut certs behind there. That's nice. Alright. Yeah, I'll be back in a second. Yeah, sorry about the brief break. My apprentice had a seizure the other day. In fact, to date, she's had about four of them. Um, so, we're still not quite sure of the cause and we're having it followed up medically. But it does make you a little paranoid when she makes funny sounds. You sort of get up and you go running to find out what happened. Alright, so that fits onto those little nut certs. That explains why there's some such big broad headed screws. Now, questioning whether I need to put some contact cleaner on this little proprietary plug, but I think I'm probably going to be okay. Get this in here. I'm trying to be gentle with these screws so I don't strip them out. They feel deceptively flimsy. It's just fine threaded stuff. I'm always wary about it. It's so easy to cross thread. Right, that is about as firm as they were when I pulled it out. <laughs> Look, and the Samsung logo shows through. Alright. I was a lot of Sony stuff for a while, but it seemed to Samsung seems to have crept its way into my life. Alright, let's uh, pick this guy up again. And see if we have cocked anything up. Alright, where's our viewfinder? Let's come along here so you can see some of the junk in the background. Alright, that tab goes that way up, off memory, and that angle there I presume is there so that it pushes that tab out of the way. Oh, and that has popped open, so we'll push that back in. It feels like that's the plug engaging, and it's clipped in nicely. Okay, now there isn't an OS on this drive, or at least I don't think so. Um, I think it's a recycled one from a, an upgrade of one of my mother's old machines. So we'll see. I need, to, I need to straighten out these feet. I think maybe I loosened a couple of screws before trying to find out if I could get the drive out and I didn't need to. I may have upset the equilibrium of the whole thing. So we'll work on that um, once we see if the SSD actually does anything. So let's fire this up and have a look. Well, we've got a Windows logo, so it does have an OS on it. But anyway, let's... um. We'll shut this down and I'm going to reinstall from scratch, I think. Alright, we'll be back. I've got to order some dinner, so a couple of hours will pass and we'll see the next clip. Alright, so here I am tearing my hair out because I can't get Wi-Fi to work. Now, I'll explain something. That SSD, I was setting up a an operating system for my mother's old machine and this was actually a clean OS with just a couple of things like Minecraft and stuff on here. Um, and the actual hardware died, so I never got around to actually doing this. So I already have an OS on here that I don't need to worry about. But I couldn't figure out why I didn't have internet. Then I looked over here and noticed that my modem was off and the main supply has died. So I'm going to switch it over to battery. And now I have lights on my modem. So somewhere at some point today, the power supply running my modem has died. Which is not surprising considering I've been watching the volts on it drop over time. And it was down to about 10.5 volts. So I was wondering when it might die. So uh, yeah, I'll find out where that power supply is in the big jumble in this cable gantry in here. And I'll fix that later. But I'm trying to get this on the internet so that I can make sure that it registers properly. Then I'll go to a lot of other effort. Anyway, I think it's pizza time. Alright, so... I've had to uh, order some dinner, hence my mouse cable got all messed up here. So while we'll wait for that, we're going to give this a bit of a clean up. Just a bit of generic spray and wipe. See how rugged this thing really is. Then I'll give that OS a bit of a clean up. And we'll work out... Um, geez, this rag doesn't look like it had cleaned anything. Um, then we'll work out sort of how fast things are. 
and I'll see if we can play back some 4K video on it like I'd hoped. Um, I'm hoping to do a bit of basic little editing on this in the field, so when I do some longer trips, I'll be able to get stuff happening. My apprentice is much happy about the Wi-Fi working as well. Um, but yeah, that's definitely a power supply I've got to find. Wow, there is some gooey sticky shit on here, like they've had stickers on. Like they've had those bloody printable sticky labels stuck on everything. Yeah, this is going to take a bit of time. We'll be back once I've got this thing cleaned up. Now, one thing I have to stop and do immediately because it's bugging my OCD. Something chronic is this whole rocky thing. A temporary fix. I'm going to put a bit of double-sided tape and just leave the sticky layer or the um, protective layer on it and stick it to the foot. And hopefully that should be enough to balance this out just for the time being. I'm also thinking with this stuff, um, you know what, actually, I was going to put some gaffer tape over it. Um, in fact, I think I might do that now that that's just behaved like that. Um, I'm going to put some tape over the docking port cover uh, to make a docking port cover. I think it's probably meant to have one looking at this, um, but I don't think I'll ever find a docking station or use one for this. Anyway, let's see if this fits more level. Okay. Not completely perfect, but better than it was. All right, let's check our startup times. There's probably a bit of junk on this drive already, so I'm probably going to need to sort of do a, a refresh install. Let's see how quick she boots up. Well, it's into Windows pretty quick. Certainly a lot quicker than it was with a mechanical drive. Now I'm going to go and give all this a bit of a wipe down. Well, geez, that is quick. Yep, and it's still got. Jennifer on it, so I think I'm going to change the username and create a new user account and stuff. But well, that's alright. Okay. Starting to look like a usable laptop, which is not very much money at all. Alright, is that a good cleanup? I know the password's incorrect. Okay, let's see. Um, should log in relatively quick. Nowhere near as quick as my main workstation PC, but you know, it's portable and it's old. My workstation is brand spanking new and it's a Ryzen 9 3950X with an X570 SSD in M.2 format. Yeah, this is having a bit of a thing. So I think I'm going to refresh the user on this, but looking pretty good. The SSD is going to go in okay. Anyway, let's uh, see what else we can do with this. All right, so we've done a few things here. We've trimmed down all the graphical accessories and bits and pieces we don't need, which largely involves going into the performance function, function or section of the Windows 10 settings and selecting, what is it, for best performance. Pretty much turns off all the bells and whistles and I just turned on um, icons again, mostly because I don't need all of that stuff. Let's try a bit of 4K 60 frame video using um, MPHC. That's the media player that comes with um, k -like codec pack. This is a bit of, uh, so it's pretty responsive going back and forth from full screen. Not the fastest refresh rate monitor, but it doesn't matter. It'll work. Speakers aren't, it's a mono speaker, but I can still hear what's going on. <coughs> so that's not so bad. Let's try a different aspect ratio of 4K here. This is director's view. This will be a video you'll probably see. I'm not sure if you see before or after this, but this is a clip out of it. So it's working all right. So it's going to play it nicely. Let's try a little bit of Star Trek here. Less than 30 seconds, of course, because copyrights and stuff. Um, I just want to see if it will play. So let's have a look here. So we're going to get... Yeah. Oh, that's going to play. Good old next gen. Alright, and that's all playing off a memory stick, which is good. And that's down here. So, let's get some editing software on and see if I can actually edit 4K. Alright, so I'm just taking a quick look at the system stats here. And uh, yeah, it is a two-core 
um, for thread. So it's uh, being an Intel, it's probably using hyper threading. Um, 2.6 gigahertz, not too bad. Um, although this seems positively like snail's pace compared to my 32 thread Ryzen, but still. Um, 3 meg L3 cache is actually kind of nice. Uh, it's moving along all right. SSD is just not reporting its usage statistic because SSDs work differently. And I'm down to about 2.8 gig of 7.8. So let's get some of this editing software on here and see what we can do. Now I've established the norms. All right, so we've got some software on here finally to do some editing. I like to use Cyberlink Power Director. A lot of you guys criticize me for not using Adobe products. There's reasons about that I'll go into on another date. And I notice it's just started raining actually, and it sounds like it's going to be a big weather event. So let's, uh, let's import a video file. This is a bit of 4K from the Argo. Uh, let's whack that in here. Okay, well it's, it's moving reasonably quickly so far. Um, let's, you know, look, you know what, let's just trim this. Whack that right there. No, we didn't want to do that. We want to do um, cut there. Okay, split that apart. Whack a photo in the middle, whatever. No, don't do that. All right, so this trackpad, actually, I've got to say, this trackpad's actually quite nice. Um, I've used a lot of trackpads in my time, and this one is actually quite comfortable. All right, my signature fade effect we're going to use here. And let's see how we go on playback. Oh. It's going to preview 4K nicely. Okay. Cool. Now let's just undo some of what we want to do here. Undo that. Yep. Okay. So it's going to work right. How are we going to go on produce side of things? Let's see if we can fit it out as H.265. Yep. We can do that. Um... We're at MPEG 4 at 1080p. Let's try 2K because that's what I'm trying to do when I can. Although a lot of my stuff is on. Um, it's usually rendered out as 1080p or has been the last two episodes because of a setting. While that's rendering, let's see what our CPU cores are doing. It's nothing like the speed on my main workstation works, but you know, <laughs> we're something like a good 28 cores or 28 threads rather less. Because, uh, yeah, my main CPU, main workstation is a uh, 16 core, 32 thread. <coughs> Alright, so CPU is at maximum, we expect that. <coughs> GPU is not doing that much, so I might see if I can use GPU rendering, although it is an Intel HD graphics, it's not likely to be that great. Um, but, based on this, I'll probably get my videos done in the field, just a little more slowly, which is the sacrifice you make. But I'll probably get there. Um, yeah, we're just going to take about 10 minutes. That's not too bad. Well, I'm going to probably cancel this rendering. Um, because we don't really need that. It's just a test. So I think we're going to work alright. Did I say no to no to stop cancelling? Yeah, that's the one. I said no, stop cancelling. Which can which cancelled the cancel. Which meant it kept going. Um, although, in the meantime, we are doing updates here as well. So we've got a bit to do. Anyway, um, that's pretty well it for the hardened laptop, and I've got to run and head out into the field, which means I'll be editing this video and uploading that in the field. I've just noticed a strobing effect too, um, pulse width modulated keyboard lights. I found this has keyboard lighting too, so that's nice. Alright, anyway, um, we'll see you in the next one, and I hope this was interesting.